armor on the hive does not work how you might logically think it does. You might even remember me going over this in my video with Evident on the Ember Sword. To full diamond, sharp 2 also does half a heart. I've got a sharp 2 right here if you want it. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah, wait, put on full diamond. That did half a heart? Yes. Okay, yeah, so weapons don't matter. I'm just gonna main this sword. Exa this yeah. did half a heart too, right? Yes, that did also did half a heart. Okay, yeah, there's no point. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? In this video, I'm gonna do my best to explain how Armor on the Hive works, how you can use it to your advantage, and talk about how other servers have changed armor to have it make more sense. Before we do so, however, if you could please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're a fan of my content, that would be much appreciated. Now, enjoy this video. So, I've always had the suspicion that Armor on the Hive was weird to begin with. That was then proven when one of my Discord admins and stream mods, Tranker, sent me a Google Doc that shows the damage that every possible weapon does to every full armor combo on the Hive. Now, it seems like a normal chart to begin with, but if you look a little bit closer, specifically at the Diamond Armor category for both Sky Wars and Treasure Wars, you'll notice that's when stuff starts getting a little bit weirder. In the Sky Wars category, every weapon that you could possibly hit someone with does 0.5 hearts of damage to someone with diamond armor. It's the same in the Treasure Wars diamond armor category with the exception of the stone pickaxe. Now, for a completely different video that's since been scrapped, I went and tested this in a vanilla bedrock world. What I found surprised me quite a lot. All of what this chart says also applies to vanilla Minecraft bedrock edition. To diamond armor, a diamond sword, a wooden sword, and an iron pickaxe all do the same amount of damage half a heart. Now, the reason why I said the footage from the other video was scrapped was because I was completely baffled about why armor was like this. However, just recently, for whatever reason, I remembered back to a single line on one of the small change roundups from about two and a half months ago. It reads, fire damage now properly penetrates armor over time, and in parentheses it says vanilla parity. The fire damage part isn't that useful for me because I've gone over that in a different video already, but it's the thing in parentheses that says vanilla parity. What the Hive is saying here is that they're trying to make their armor and weapons work the same way that they do in vanilla Minecraft. This is why, if you remember a while back, protection armor was changed on the Hive so that it no longer takes 32 hits to kill someone with a sharp 2 iron sword. Instead, it now takes 20 hits on the Hive like it does in vanilla Minecraft. As for why vanilla Minecraft does it this way, I'm not too sure. I spent about 20 minutes googling and wasn't able to find any sort of solid answer that I could understand, so as I like to say, it is what it is, I guess. Now, with all this being said, I would like to discuss some of the strategy that you can do on the Hive with this knowledge. Recently, a lot of people have discovered that you can just use the Ember Sword against full diamond armor because it does the same amount of damage as any other sword. If you have the same armor as your opponent and they don't have an Ember Sword, you'll probably end up winning the fight assuming that your fire procs at least once. However, you have to be careful and make sure that they don't have protection armor, otherwise this will happen. Okay, as you can see, I am not losing any hearts. Literally nothing. Protection one diamond helmet, it will literally do nothing. And I know there, this isn't the, uh, this has been a reported bug, but for now, this is so overpowered. It literally does nothing. Basically, any weapon that's a wooden sword or its equivalent damage does zero damage to full diamond armor with a protection one piece on it. Also, knowing about how armor works on the hive can be used to your advantage in Treasure Wars as well. If you've ever watched MJ Owns You, you might have seen when he does a free shop 1v1 against someone and they're both in full diamond armor, he'll generally use an iron axe or an iron pickaxe just to troll a little bit, and it perfectly shows off how armor on the hive works. He's doing the exact same amount of damage to someone in full diamond armor with an iron axe as they are doing to him with a diamond sword. If the other person doesn't know about this, they might get cocky and think that they're doing more damage or that he's doing no damage and make mistakes that MJ can capitalize on. I know I've fallen victim to that before and I'm sure many others have as well. This can just be used in regular Treasure Wars games as well if your opponent has full diamond armor, there's no point in wasting your emeralds on a diamond sword. Just buy literally any other weapon that's cheaper except for a stone pickaxe and you'll 
you'll be doing the same amount of damage to them as you would be doing with a diamond sword. Now, I would like to address the fact that some people have called this broken or a bug in the past, but I personally don't think that's true. I talked about vanilla parity earlier in the video, and I honestly think that this is intended by the hive. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird to see people using random weapons in competitive games, and I know there's the thing about ember swords not doing any damage to protection armor, but I think all of those are intended features to make sure that you can play the game in multiple different ways and still have a chance. I would also assume that the hive probably already knows about all of this stuff, and if they wanted to change it, they would. If they didn't already know about it, well, I guess this is the video that sheds light on it. Either way, I want to talk about how another server handles their armor differently from the hive. So, you may or may not know, but Galaxite actually doesn't have any armor that you can physically put on on the server. What they have instead is something called damage reduction, which is essentially the same thing as armor, but it doesn't actually show up as armor on your person, if that makes sense. Instead, it shows up next to your player's name, which can be good and bad depending on the situation. I'll talk more about that later though, because I want to show you the values of the damage reduction and compare them to what regular armor in Minecraft is. You should probably note that these are very rough comparisons, but in Kronos, Tier 1 armor is basically leather, Tier 2 is gold, Tier 3 is chain, Tier 4 is iron, and Tier 5 is diamond. In Core Wars, Tier 1 is comparable to gold, Tier 2 is iron, and Tier 3 is similar to diamond. Again, please note that those are very rough comparisons, and I just said that to give an idea of similarity. Now, let's talk about the practicality of Galaxite's damage reduction. The problem with physical armor is the fact that it's an actual item in the game, and it's more difficult to change how it works. With cosmetic damage reduction, you can balance that a lot easier because you can just change the values of it, and that's that. The way that Galaxite displays their damage reduction, however, is what makes it a little bit weird to players that aren't used to it. Like I said, it shows on the bar with your name, which means that if you can see someone's name tag through a block, you can see what armor they have. In comparison to the Hive, you can't see people's armor through walls. Also on Galaxite, especially in Kronos, where you can be in very open areas and see for a long ways, sometimes name tags might be at a render distance, and you won't be able to see what armor they have. Granted, it's most likely going to be too small for you to see anyways if you could see the name tag, but it's different from high survival games in the fact that if you're in an open area, you might be able to see a player and their armor before you can see their name tag. Taking it further, you may even be able to see their name tag on Galaxite, but you just can't see the armor because, like I said, it might just be too small to see. I feel like it would just be useful if there was some sort of indicator for someone's armor at longer distances. I have no ideas or suggestions for how this could be implemented, but it's just something that I've kept in mind for a while. Still, I like how Galaxite is taking a different approach towards armor and not using physical armor unlike most other servers. I also think it's cool that the Hive is keeping their armor completely vanilla, because the average player can understand it, and because it promotes a lot of different playstyles. I feel like the moral of the story here is that armor can be done in multiple different ways on Minecraft, but at the end of the day, if it works, it works. That's gonna wrap it up for this video, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. Before we end, honestly a huge shout out to Tranker for sharing with me his Google Doc on Hive Armor. This video would literally not be possible without it. And finally, big shoutouts to all of my channel members. They support me for $4.99 a month, and they get some cool perks like getting their names displayed at the end of every video. If you'd like to become a channel member or check out what perks they have, you can do so by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button, or by clicking the link in the description. Big thank you once again to all of you. Speaking of the subscribe button, please consider subscribing if you enjoy my content. If you enjoyed this video and made it this far, I guarantee that you would enjoy some of my other videos, so make sure to subscribe so that you'll be able to find them in the future. That's gonna be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.